Hi, Luigi Tramontana here from Craft Animations. I am going to show you the Observer Cam. In this tutorial, I will also um, combine this camera with the auto zoom and focus, not the auto zoom, the, the zoom and focus cam in another scene here. But first of all, I will just show you some of the things with the Observer Cam that you can do. And uh, the first thing you notice here is that what is this uh, humanoid? It's actually a humanoid. Uh, what is this humanoid doing here? Well, uh, it depends on, on uh, the, the thing is that in Maya and, and Max or whatever you, you, uh, you use, uh, the scale is usually not some kind of uh, correct scale. In Maya, for example, it's very usual to work in centimeters. So if you scale this camera down, then you scale the fellow down and this humanoid here should be approximately the same size as other objects in the scene. It should be as large as a humanoid, humanoid would be so that it translates uh, with the correct speeds. So that's just a quick thing to, to scale it correctly. Okay, and uh, before we start here, let's just have a look at the parameters it has here. Now it has quite a few parameters, but most of them are for the inputs. And uh, in the Craft Director Studio, the standard thing is that you activate a feature through your input in real time, and then something will happen. And I will go through these when we bind the input to the Observer Cam here. Uh, if we do not consider those, then we have very simple uh, setup of a set of parameters here. So we have a relative scale, which uh, we actually don't use. Uh, the, this is uh, very rarely used, so don't, don't change that at all. If you want to be able to roll with the observer cam, then you should check this one here because, uh, for example, in another tutorial, I will use the 3D connection mouse. Uh, for example, Space Pilot or some of the, those um, uh, special thing, then you would definitely want roll in most cases, well, not most, but in some cases, to give this extra dimension of effect. Uh, usually you don't use the roll, but uh, it's there. And then you have can have a walk cycle and how fast it fades out and, uh, and kicks in and what frequency it should have. And all of these parameters can also be controlled by inputs if you want to bind them. Uh, right in this tour, I will not do that. You can also zoom with this cam. Uh, I would not recommend using this one. If you have the zoom and focus cam, then that's definitely preferable. The same goes with the target distance. Uh, the rest, as I said, is for the inputs. And let's just... Uh, it's very standard. All inputs here have a response factor, meaning how fast should it react to a change in your input. So if you push a button or pull a thumbstick, if you have a gamepad, then how quickly should it respond to your change there? And the maximum value for that change, what is it? So that's the two parameters that you have for all the inputs here. And uh, if we just jump into the inputs, now this is probably getting quite boring for some of you, but uh, stay with me for a while because uh, some people need need um, movement immediately. But uh, this is important, so just stay with me. So you see here, you have forward, backwards, etc. All of these standard movements, uh, and if I just I have a gamepad, a Logitech gamepad, and I like to. Um, use that gamepad uh, uh, and since uh, I have it here as an example it just binds itself to all of these features except for roll here this one you could bind yourself uh, and there are some more features here that are not bound so I would just talk about this a little bit here you have shaker so you can actually shake this one the humanizer cam is hundred times more sophisticated than this shake but if you have simple shakes I think this one will do just fine <clears throat> and then you have a walk cycle 
is uh, undergoing uh, some improvements uh, from the the one that you will see here which is very simple uh, then you have the me uh, translation memory regulator and orientation memory regulator now these are quite interesting you can save a, a memory regulator state and what a memory regulator is I will show you quite soon and uh, then when you want to go to that saved state you just click these two the anti-roll regulator you also have if you have a roll and you want to cancel that roll then you can push this this uh, button here which is not bound, bound right now so those are the features and uh, just to quickly show you how it works here I will just hit record here quickly and uh, if I move my le uh, right thumbstick to the left uh, I pan right and left like this and uh, up down means going up and down then I can pitch it of course I can do all of these uh, things uh, that that this kind of camera would do now one thing that you will notice here is if I have turned the camera to the left here panned and then go to the left then it will go to its local left so that's a different uh, different things it's more natural to move it that way and as you see here this is not true for the forward and and up up and down because uh, that's a more natural way of moving it but for the left and right it should be the local left and right um, on the other hand if you check the roll here then this is not true because then as you see here we in, in, in induce a roll angle here by panning it in a tilted way and if I push left now or upwards forwards and upwards then it's always local so that's the change you get uh, if you use a roll and uh, if I now bind this anti-roll regulator here to <coughs> say well let's say uh, the, this button button number zero and then press it then I will eliminate that roll as you see so let's just stop this and bind these uh, translational memory memory here I will use one key for both the rotational and the orientational memory regulator the button number one and I will save the state with button number two here so what does that mean now well if I move the camera a little bit like this up down and uh, right now we actually had the roll here so let's move back and uncheck the roll like that and uh, let's say I have moved my camera so it's right here and it has a tilt angle there now this works for the roll also of course and now I press the button number two bang like that and if I now move around here and uh, change the tilt and the panning like that and then I want to come back to the exact position where I saved it then I push the first button here bang and it flies smoothly back to that position now this this is very handy if you use this camera to fly around for example uh, a helicopter or or something that actually moves a car and then you want to get back to the the original position when you have uh, looked around a bit then this feature is quite nice to have okay so the other features here uh, are more clearly seen in the in a more advanced scene so let's have a look at that like this and I will not be able to do this in this tutorial so that will be part two of the observer cam tutorial so join me there thank you